A few months ago we did a video on the channel going through all of the products that are currently in my detailing setup. So today we're at the other Glenn's garage and we're going through some of the products that have made the cut onto uh, his detailing shelves here. Okay, so along the bottom here I've got all my microfiber and I sort of got them in order of the process. So we usually start off with um, our drying microfiber here and um, so got the drying towels here and I've also got a couple of the door jam towels. So you know when we've when we finished washing the car and things like that, these are the first set of towels that we grab. And then next to those, I've got um, a couple of the glass cleaning towels. And these towels all come from the, uh, the rag company. So, got a set of the glass cleaning towels in here. And the reason why I've got to use my glass cleaning towels is because I'm using um, bead maker on top of that, um, the G Technic glass coating. And, and those two don't mix very well. So I have to use um, a glass cleaning agent to clean the glass in part of my drying stick, which is really quite frustrating. Um, along here, got the uh, the old wheel towel, and I um, I quite like the size of these towels. These towels are really good for drying the wheels, and then I also put bead maker on top of the um, on top of the wheels. There. And that's that's been a really good little tip there, and I've enjoyed that because it makes cleaning the wheels so much easier and um, super slick. And um, yeah, I really recommend that little step in the process. You've been started doing that now, eh? No, I haven't, but I think I need to. Oh. I need to because my wheels definitely have lost the, uh, the hydrophicity. They're not too easy to uh, clean the brake dust off them. So I think that's a key part of the process that you've been doing differently. Yeah, I have been trying a few different try drying aids on the wheels and um, bead maker, exactly what you're gonna use on the paint, same for what you should be using on the wheels. I've, I've really enjoyed using that. What have you got on the one on the far right here? On the far right here is the interior towel. This towel is a... Um, there's a towel we need to change, I think. I'm not sold on the size of this towel. I think it's far too big. It's good when you're doing uh, leather seats, I find, because you can turn all the sides over, but I think it's way too big for it. It's interior. way too big, because by the time you fold it in half, you've still got that much. Yeah. Then you fold it in half again, and you have this much, which is probably roughly the size that you want to be using, but now you've got so many folds, it sort of, when you're using it, it slips off, and it's just too, too hard to sort of handle, I reckon. You need a good, smaller size towel for interior. Yeah, I think that's one product in the uh, range so far that's definitely not locked in as, uh, I guess, our preferred option, but it's good. It's got us through to this stage. Now, this sort of bin set up here is not great. The bin's only just fit in, but I've got to push it past this little rack part here of, this, of, of the, the shelving system. It's not the greatest. So um, eventually, we'll get some customized built-in system, but for now, that'll do. What I have here, really easy accessible, is all the rags. So these are all the rags. Some of them are used like old coating towels, old wheel towels, different towels that have just got past their, their use by date. I just keep in here, and these are really good to keep in the garage. And then the last set of microfiber is uh, polishing removal towels. It's probably the least most used in the least uh, most used. Yeah, whole setup. I got twenty of these. Um, Removal, uh, polish removal towels, I reckon 20 is, is the key number that you really need. Do you agree? Yeah, I think 20 is a good number. Um, though what I probably would do is look for a slightly higher pile one as well. It's obviously quite a low pile. Um, and I think for softer paints, you may want something a little bit less aggressive than that. But yeah, 20 is a good number for most of these towels, I think, to have a really good setup. So a key thing that we've sort of learnt throughout our, um, I guess, paint correction step and coating is that when you're removing the coating, you tend to, well, people tend to have one color for coating removal. Now, I did have the green ones. They've made their way into, into the rag bin, but when you use your first wipe or your first step in removing the coating, you then have like another green towel to do that. The problem with that is you get mixed up quite a lot, don't you? So you're like, oh, which one did I use on the first wipe? Or is this the first wipe? Or is this the second wipe towel? So a little thing we're probably going to do next time is to have two different colours. So first wipe one colour, second wipe different colour. Yeah, I think one of the things that we realise when um, watching back some of those videos is quite often I'm going, right, first wipe on left, second wipe on right, having to repeat that back and forward to each other. Yeah. So having different colours to differentiate them, I think is probably the best way to make sure that you're not using your first as a second or vice versa. So we were talking about the other day, the orange drying towel that I showed at the beginning. It's a really nice size, it's easy to manage. Um, I feel like it dries the car pretty well once you've done your initial blowing off with the leaf blower. But you sort of think that it's a bit harsh on the paint. Yeah, I think that it's a really low pile on that towel. Don't get me wrong, when those towels are brand new, they're really soft. Once yep. you've gone through a few wash cycles, they lose that a little bit. And, and I'm wondering if it does induce some, Feels some a bit marring. Rough. Yeah, I mean, I'm not too... Not too sure. I mean, we've got that final step in our process, right? The car's pretty much already dry by the time we mm. use that. 
Um, and I'm just wondering if that may introduce some really light marring to the paint. Um, so it's something that I do want to keep an eye on, but I think maybe some softer towels would be a good And when option. those towels get to the end of their life, the thread starts to pull on them. So I do have a couple yep. where that thread is pulling through. So I see what you mean. I think it's worth, worth trying something different. I, the size is really nice. Yeah, so I think out of all of the towels that we just went through, I think the drying aid towels are probably something that we need to experiment with a little bit more, and definitely interior. We need to have a smaller towel, yep. um, in, in addition to the ceramic coating. Same towel, two colours, keep it really easy for ourselves. Yeah, but don't get me wrong, this setup here is, is, is pretty good, it's a great starting point. So then you've got all these smaller boxes here, and obviously all of the, uh, the big foot pads. And the smaller boxes is all the sort of bits and pieces that you need to, I suppose, complete the job. So a um, little spout here for filling up um, the smaller bottles from the gallons. I've got this little thing here which goes on the top of... Um, That's great, I love that for a gallon of soap. Yeah, so you put it on the top of your gallon here and it's like a little spout to fill up your smaller bottles, really handy. And then I've got a few other bits and pieces here like um, blocks oh, for yeah, putting out blocks. for suede applicators and things like that. And the same again in this little box, there's a few little bits and pieces there. I've got um, the two different types of tape and we've talked at great length about these tapes in the other sort of wrap-up series of the last detail. And um, got the Rupees light and I've also got the... Um, the Rupees Claw Tool. Oh, the Claw pad. Tool. That's a great accessory. Oh, I love that. I reckon that's my favourite accessory, eh? That's a good one. That's oh, a good one. I love that. Cheap so, tool as well. So stoked when we got that, eh? I was like, oh, <laughs> that's the tool you want. And then you've got all the pads on the right-hand side, and you kept all of those in the original boxes as well. Super tidy. So Looks original like boxes, we, um, on the blue WRX, we used the, uh, the Rupees Wool for the cutting, and then we used the um, Rupees Yellow for um, the, 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 the final step. Uh, you have to get your right pad set up you have to sort of work with your paint you have to work out how your paint's going to react to the type of compounds you're going to use and the type of pads that you're going to use so i'd recommend that when you're starting out and you're doing your test spots you probably want a big range of all the stuff but small small numbers of that work out what's going to use um, what's going to work well for you and then go and purchase the things that you're going to use a lot. I think that's a step that we probably didn't do so well. We sort of took a bit of a gamble about what we thought was going to work for us. It did to some degree, but if you really want to hone in on your technique and really get paint correct, you get your paint correct really well, I think you need to spend a little bit more time buying a few things, trying it out, and then committing. Oh, it's definitely key to have a whole range of different ones because you don't know what the paint's going to be like on your car until you do it, the uh, you know first detail on it. Obviously, second time around, you know a bit more how it's going to react, yeah. but if you don't have the right pad combination and you're going, right, I should be able to get by with this pad and this pad, you may end up starting your detail finding that it's not getting the results you're after. I think we'll work reasonably well on the Sabaru paint here. I would have liked to have used microfiber to see how that worked, um, and that's something that we're going to do next time around. Um, a, a trial and error, absolutely trial and error. We do have the five inch pads, we do have the three inch pads, and we do have a couple of the one inch, so we used all three of the Rupes um, polishing machines to get the job done, and I think you really do need the variation in those tools, but um, you're gonna have to trial, do some trial and error to work out the pad combo. Then we move up to the next shelf here, so obviously these are all of your, uh, I guess this is your restock shelf, right? These are all your gallons to fill up your smaller bottles. Yeah, and I really like having the gallons that match the bottles, I think that's, quite a nice little feature here. It's definitely as we get to here, it's not quite perfectly matched, but um, the gallons are, are, are a way of you seeing how much sort of product you've got and when do I need to do a reorder because trying to get stuff shipped at the moment is an oh, absolute nightmare. pretty difficult. So maybe we start talking the top shelf here because a lot of these products correlate to the one below. You've got a few products on the bottom here though that don't make the cut necessarily up here. Yeah. There's some that we've been trying, but maybe let's start from the, uh, the left of the setup here, shall we, and, and walk our way along. So we have uh, G-Technic Crystal Serum um, Light and we have the G-Technic XO. So that's the two products that we used as the coating of the blue Sabaru there. And... Um, it's a tried and tested combo, right? Yeah. We've done that three or four times over. We know that works well. So and, got... and, and everyone else out there in today's market is telling you that it works really well as well. Exactly. It's something that um, we know that works, but also we don't have experience with any other coating on the market. No, we don't. So I guess that probably takes us a shelf up, doesn't it, before we come back along here. So obviously these are sitting here ready for a detail of another car very shortly, but we are going to start trying some of the CarPro range as well. So we've got Deluxe and Gliss up the top. 
in addition to Flyby 30, we might come back to that one, yeah? But yeah, yeah. we're trying to, uh, I guess, expand our horizons a little bit and get some more experience with some other ceramic Try some different the products and, and um, so that we've got some information to provide so that we've, you know, saying, yes, we've tried this and this doesn't work or this combo works better with this combo. We don't yep. know until we try, right? Now, this product's interesting. I, I don't have that in my setup. I wish I did. I think it's good. So this is the um, Obsessed Garage um, Decon Soap. It's the, again, the only Decon Soap that I've ever used. Yep. I don't know too much about Decon Soaps. All as I know is that Matt from Obsessed Garage said, this Decon Soap's the best soap he's ever tried. So I, I suppose the man has tried lots of soaps, so you've got to accept that um, what he's telling you is correct. But again, I've used a little bit over half a bottle. I mean, it's going to be on the next couple of cars that we've got uh, to detail. And so that's probably something we're just going to finish off that bottle. And, and yeah, in time to come, we would like to try some others. But it's kind of like the soap that you don't really use that much. So you can't really go through it as quickly as one would like. No, you've had that around for, I mean, that's been a year, year and yeah. a half probably, to be honest. And you go through, this is a 32 ounce bottle. You get four cars out of that. Yeah. I think by the time you put it in a bucket, some in a foam cannon, it's a tough product to gauge as well if it's doing any good because you're using that prior to polishing so you're not doing that and then putting the car out in the open using it washing it again you, you're really tough because you're doing that in combination with a whole range of this other things including polishing and ceramic coating so and if you're not going through lots of cars if you're only doing your one d um your daily driver car then it's going to be a couple of years before you get back to it again before you can try again and this is an expensive exercise to go through oh, it is, so yeah. it's not the soap you're going to go through a lot I suppose you're looking for something that's got a slightly higher pH because we did try some of that Koch Kimi um, Auto Shampoo that's got a really high pH, around about the 9. It's really and cheap I, too. Really cheap, and yeah. I did notice that that pulled a lot of the bead maker off. Yeah. So I guess maybe that could be a, an option that we'd like to try that might um, pull that top layer of bead maker off. I don't know if it's going to pull any EXO or Crystal Serum off, but... Um, it sort of worked that same sort of effect that you'd expect from a decon soap. So at the moment, the PNS Pearl is the soap of choice. We've been going through a few different soaps, working out which ones we like. There will be a whole video coming up of our reasons behind what soap we've chosen, why we've chosen it, and the sort of things that we looked um, to tick the boxes for the criteria that we're after. But at the moment, that's the soap of choice. It's the same with the Brake Buster, which is our, our wheel cleaner. We've been using wheel cleaner quite a lot. Um, to be honest with you, a lot of the wheel cleaners tend to be relatively the same. I have had a go with the Koch Kimi one and I think it's it's roughly about the same. So as we continue to move on, we've got some bead maker here. That's the topper of choice at the moment. That's what we've been using a lot. We have had some experience with other toppers. At the moment, that's what um, makes it onto my shelf. Um, OG tie dressing, yep, sweet. Um, this is one that we've definitely had a lot of experience with. We've used a whole heap of different um, tie dressings and different looks, how long does it last, does it create sling, that type of stuff. Um, and this is the one we decided to keep. So then we come to our glass cleaner. Now I do have a couple of rows of glass cleaner and the reason for that is this green bottle here, I use this bottle to um, fill up my um, windscreen washer reservoir and I use the, um, what's it called, bar bugs. Bar bugs and I, yeah. use, I get it in a three litre RTD, so ready to use. It's already diluted for me and that's the, the, the one I like. And um, I've got, I think behind there, I've got some IPA alcohol, which is for cleaning the windows and stuff when you are putting a new, a new coating on there. And then, I, to be honest with you, I don't actually know what glass cleaner is in here because as you can see along the top, I've been doing some more testing and, and working out which type of glass cleaner we use. So who knows what's in there, but when I've worked it out or when we've worked it out, that's the product there that will fill into here. You're a pro at glass cleaning though. I bet that you could open that, spray that, and, and you'd, you'd be fairly, you reckon? Uh, I reckon you'd get a fairly accurate guess as to what that is. We're not gonna know if you're right or wrong, but um, I, I consider you a, a pro in the Oh, uh, this glass is the banana expert. scent one. Yeah. And the only one that comes in a banana scent that I've tried is yep. the Car Pro glass cleaner. That'll be the one. Do you reckon it smells like banana? Yeah, that's Car Pro. See? Glass expert right here, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. That's our Car Pro glass cleaner. Clarify. Clarify, that's what it's called, isn't that's it? Clarify. One. See, you know the name, I know the smell. That's why there's two of us. Surface prep. I'm not sure about this. Neither. So you use some sort of surface prep or you use some sort of um, chemical that you use to basically remove the polish in your polishing stages and also to prepare the paint, remove anything off before you coat it. So you would use something like Maguire Surface Prep, or you'd use something like... Um, what's Car Pro Eraser. Car Pro Eraser. That's the gold standard of the product, I yeah. think. Yeah. Oh, I... I... G-Technic Panel Wipe? 
potentially. Yep. We haven't tried that. We haven't tried the G10 panel wipe. But again, this is the same type of product that you're not going to use a lot of unless you're doing lots of detailing of cars. And it's also, by the time you buy it in a gallon, you're, I don't know how much, but you're, you're under $100 deep in a big bottle of product that you're not necessarily going to use a lot of. So a little bit more testing involved with that type of product there. And um, I'm not sure what the, what the answer is there. They probably perform roughly about the same. I mean, it comes down to personal preference, what you like, but um, Carpro Eraser is probably the one that we're going to... We, well, you definitely like the smell of it. I like you the even smell buy of it. a little smell to go on the car. Yeah, of. that gets a bit sickly, but um, yeah, I think Carpro Eraser for me. And then talking about gallons, that one on the right there, on the top shelf, you've got a lifetime supply below it there, don't you? So my recommendation here is with hyperdressing, unless you're going to use hyperdressing a lot to do... Um, treat your plastics of like um, beds of trucks and use that as your tire dressing, regularly do your, um, your engine bay and stuff, don't buy a gallon. Meguiar's have brought out an RTD version which is a ready to use um, bottle of this that's already mixed, that would be my recommendation. I've had this for two years and that's how much I've used and that's how much of the gallon I've used. So just buy, I would just buy one bottle of that. So I've got a gallon here of all-purpose cleaner, I chose the Meguiar's one all-purpose cleaner, in my experience, is all roughly the same. We do have a little bottle of the Koch Kimi one down there, Green Star. What do you think about it? I haven't tried it yet, so, I mean, I've been using the Meguiar's one, no complaints. And I think this, it's just a... It's, it's, again, it's not a product that I necessarily use a lot of. And by the time you dilute it to 4 to 1, you do have a lot of chemical there. So, I choose one that you like, choose one that's within your budget or whatever and stick with it. I think, I think you can't go wrong. Behind a few of these, I do have um, Iron Decon, the Meguiar's Iron Decon. I would stick with Tari um not Tyrex, what's the Iron Ionix, X? yep. Carpro Iron X, because we've used that, that you used to have. I would prefer that over that one. The, the iron removing products are really expensive. So just, again, choose one that you're happy with. And then, what else do I have back here? Express Spray Wax, which I never use because the car's coated and we use um, Bead Maker. And then I have a little bit of um, Nanoskin Glide. Well, that was a bit of a mistake too because you dilute Nanoskin Glide to like 10 to 1 or something stupid like that, 20 to 1 or whatever. And again, you don't use a lot of it. You just use that with your auto scrub. So you could use something like, um, what's that product now with the waterless wash stuff? Or oh, the McKees? Yeah, the McKees. Or yeah. what's the other one um, in the blue bottle? You know the name. It's not going to help with you staring at the roof, man. What's in the blue one? The blue bottle. The blue bottle. Nano, uh, no, that's what we're talking about. Nano skin. Um, O&R. Uh, yeah, O&R. Uh, O&R by... Um, What's the name of it? Everyone's going to be looking at this going, oh, yeah, I know what that is. Anyway, the O&R one, that's on, like, the, the rag company. It's the one Matt from Obsessed Garage used to use. Um, you could probably use a little bit of that if you diluted it down so that you could then use that to... Um, um, use your nanoskin auto glide uh, auto skin on. Is that what it's called? Auto skin? Auto skin? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you don't have one anymore. I don't have anyone because I, ru it. I, I ruined it with Tarex last time. Nano skin auto scrub. Auto scrub. So then we've got the polishers of choice over here, and, and these are tried and tested in our setup anyway. So we got. Well, the these are the only polishers we've ever tried. Well, no, they're not. We've tried Rupees. Oh, we have. We've tried Meguiar's. We've tried Rupees, yeah, yeah. We've tried Meguiar's. Yeah, we've tried a few. Yeah, we have tried we've a few. We've tried the, all the sample bottles we get, we're given a go. Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, cool. we've, we've set it on these ones. Yeah. So we've got the Sonex Perfect Finish. This is a good one step polish. So we've been using this one if we need to one step or as a finishing polish, obviously, after we've hit it with either the Jess Car Correcting Compound or I think tucked behind there's slightly more aggressive. It's the Sonos. Uh, so Sonax. Sonos. Sonax Cut Max. Cut Max. And I would probably like to add Meguiar's M101 just as something a little bit more aggressive for those ha harder things to get rid of. Obviously, if you've got a brand new car, you're probably only going to be one-stepping it or maybe get to your dress, uh, dress car correction compound. But if you've got a car there that's 15, 17 years old yep. and it's absolutely been paddock bashed, then you probably do want to step your game up and go to Hit it with something a bit, bit more harder, aggressive. Right? Bearing in mind, you're going to get more dusting, etc. So it's basically based on how hard in your facility yep. that you want to do. You got something hiding behind there as well, that Meguiar's bottle. I think way back here. So this product here. That one. So it's Meguiar's M39. That's really good for cleaning up plastic trim. So you know the porous trim that's usually around windscreen, around your windscreen wipers, around your air vents, that type of stuff. A little bit of that on a brush, scrub it. It brings the, the whiteness that's um, in the pores of the plastic 
cleans it out and that really sets you up for, for coating. Yeah, so if you get any polish on your trim as well, so if you didn't tape very well, that's a great product to have in your setup to make sure you can get that out um, because that polish makes an absolute mess if you get it on trim. So I think it's a good one to have. And again, you're not gonna use a lot of it. No. I've used half a bottle in that car there, so I mean, a bottle of this would, would, would do you absolutely fine. So a real key part of um, getting this all done is um, being able to wash your microfiber, right? So we have made a, a video on using the um, PNS rag syringes. I think personally, this is the best um, cleaner that you, microfiber cleaner you're going to come across. We tried quite a few as well. That's probably the fourth or fifth detergent yep. we've tried. And um, I'm really happy with it. You're not going to know initially straight away how well it really works. You you want to use it for a couple of months, and then once you've used it a couple of months, your microfiber really truly is rejuvenated. I think my microfiber has never felt as plush and has absorbed as, as, as well as using some of these other cleaners. So I think this is the one you wanna, wanna use. I have got the new CarPro um, MFX yes. here, which I haven't used. I don't know how well it's going, going to do, and I also don't really think having a little litre like that of the stuff is, is really gonna make me change my mind, but I've, I've got it here ready to use. The great thing about this bottle, this doesn't have, is this has the, uh, the squeezable measuring piece in there, yeah. and I think that's key. This is also in the, I uh, can't think of the name of it, the other microfiber. Microfiber Restore. Restore. Yeah. yeah, same bottle. Um, there's just something about that, right? Rag Company Towers, Rag Company Product, in combination with PNS, one of our favorites. I think that is an yeah. awesome product. I think, um, don't don't waste your time trying anything else. Um, just just get a get a gallon of that, because you do blow through quite a lot of it. Yep. If you're going to do a detail series and you're going to use it to wash your pads and stuff, you will use a lot of it. Yep. That's the one you want. I don't know how good that is. I'm sure some other people have tried it and will comment about it. So then we've got up here, this is a new bottle and you probably can't see that very well but there, but this is CarPro Flyby 30. And the reason this is on the testing shelf is we've tried a couple of different glass coatings. We've tried uh, Wolf's Glass Sealant. We've tried G-Technic G1. No, it's the G glass, whatever, G, they're whatever the G Technic glass coating is, we've tried that one. Don't as well. buy that one. No, that, um, that we can probably save that for another video, but um, I think that this is on the testing shelf because we're hoping that this may be the answer to some of the problems we've encountered with the G Technic and the Wolves. Yeah. So um, I think the key thing here that you did just mention before the testing shelf, right? Yeah. These two products here, I don't personally own, you bought them. Yeah, so they're not part of your setup, but they're, they're there because this is the next part that we're yeah. trying in our detail, right? These in combination So with why these. did you buy those? I bought those because uh, Matt from Obsessed Garage pointed us in the direction of these as a really good wheel coating. In the past we've been using the flagship coatings, we've just been using either Crystal Serum Light or you did put on your WRX the, 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 the G Technic wheel coating. Yeah. And I think the wheel coating, that G Technic one on that car, definitely outlived the, the paint coating that you put on the wheels of your car. Yep, but I think for us, key here is we, we do a lot of detailing on the channel. We really want to have our hands in a few different yeah. areas, right? We need to have some experience in some Exactly, there's no point in us sitting here going, oh, I like this, I like this, I like this, if we've never tried it. So no. we want to try these products out so we can definitely tell you what we think. Yep, we want an opinion based on experience, not an opinion based on yep. you know, what others are saying. So, um, so those will be going on the new vehicle shortly. We've got Deluxe and Gliss there. Uh, you can use Gliss as a topper instead of EXO on a paint, so you probably could do a combination of CSL and Gliss, and then keep the setup the same, use the same product. So next in line here, I've got a few glass cleaners. So, few? Yeah. How many? so I've got Gion, Invisible Glass, PNS View, um, there's a- so This makes me feel real uneasy, man. Why, uh, this should be here. There's a Koch Kimi one, and there is also the GT Perfect Glass. We talked about here that I have tried the, um, the CarPro Clarity. And again, this is something that we're getting really heavily into to try and work out what kind of glass cleaning we want. And um, we've got, again, some criteria that we're after that we want to meet. And um, I think we've found it in here somewhere. We won't let so. you know what it is because we'll bring out a video about what we did to, to work out which one we wanted, but the answer is probably on the shelf. Yeah, and it's not as easy as it sounds, right? Just any glass cleaner will be fine. For us, what we were looking for is a certain scent, a certain behavior, and a certain availability as well in yep. terms of the quantity you can buy, not the quantity, the size of the product that you can buy yeah. because it's no good for us. And availability as well. Availability, yeah. So I think there's a few factors in there. We're really excited to share some of that in an uh, upcoming video with you as well. So I also bought some of the Koch Chemie line. I got the um, the reactive wheel cleaner yeah. and I think that that is just the same like Brake Bar. So I use it on a foam cannon. It foam just as well. It does have that purple reactivity that it does with the iron that the, the Brake Buster doesn't doesn't um, doesn't do. But um, I'm still happy with the Brake Buster. And yeah. Until I find one that's different, then Brake Buster won't be uh, replaced. And the Koch Chemie product, spray sealant, comparison to a bead maker? 
Well, I used that the other night, and yeah. we're, we're as long as this weather holds up, we're going to do wash this car out here, and yeah. we're going to have a we're going to put this on for so you can have a go. Yeah. I did find that um, bead maker when you put it on, it's it's really slick. Yeah, it's really easy to use. You can't really stuff it up, but. Um, Using this this Koch Kimi one here, um, the first wipe it sort of hazes over, and I'm like, oh, okay, when it hazes over, it's going to be real hard to almost get it off. You almost have to buff it. You don't. You just do another wipe, and it sort of removes it. So it's a little bit harder to work with. If you've got some overspray, you'd see some haze there. Yep. But let me tell you, a couple of hours, come back, fill the paint. This is one of the slickest toppers or drying aids that I've that I've yeah, used so far. One of the most expensive it's, as well. I think it's probably slightly slicker than B Maker costs way yeah. more so that cost me $60 um, NZ and I got the small bottle for comparison in New Zealand this gallon of bee maker is about $89 so 89 yeah. 60 3.78 3.79 liters in here how many mils is this like this was 750? Only 50 500 500 mils 500 so you're paying almost the same is 3.79 liters of bee maker so yeah it's got some benefits it's got some downsides again i think a drying aid is just based on what you like yeah we're talking really high-end products here that are probably some of the the best in the market so we're looking at very small tweaks very small changes depending on which product you go for don't get me wrong you're not going to you're not going to be disappointed with any sort of line or complete set you oh, go with absolutely right? not the whole reason we're doing this right this is a hobby yeah. So if we can find something that's slightly better or slightly more enjoyable or yeah. easier to get than a different product, it may make the cut in our setup. You know, this is something we enjoy doing. So for us, this is not so much a, a chore to go, we've got to find something better than this and it has to be double as good. It only has to be incrementally slightly, better yeah. or more enjoyable to use. And the more you use these products, the more you get a feel for the slight differences and, and, and when to use them. And I've really enjoyed this. Yes, it's cost Omni Garage a lot of money. Yeah. But people spend a lot of money on their passion and their hobby, so this is what we're into, it's an right? Investment. Okay, so we get to the Koch Kimi Refresh um, Cockpit Cleaner, whatever you want to call that thing. Interior cleaner? Interior cleaner. Yeah. The Koch Kimi Interior Cleaner. Interior cleaner is a struggle of ours at the moment. We haven't really fumbled across a nice one. The PNS is the one I've got at the back, and the reason why I've got it at the back is because I don't like it. It smells terrible. <laughs> and um, your own cakes. <sighs> It's, it's yuck. And it's you know, great. Do you know what the other bad thing about it is? I've got a gallon of it as well. So I'm halfway through a gallon, so don't make that mistake. So yeah, we're, we're, we're working our way through it. I do have the uh, the GT Tri-Clean as well. That was something that, we'll, that we're comparing. I, I think at the moment the Koch Kimi one is a, the best one that I have here, but I'm still not happy with that either. So we're, we're working on it. It's a work in progress. Another couple of soaps here, we've got the uh, g Citrus Foam and the G-Wash with our PNS Pearl there. Um, Glenn and I are going to probably use the G-Wash this afternoon and um, just have another little feel with it. We're pretty confident and getting pretty close to squaring away which type of soap that we want to use and um, we're just in the final stages of that. These two are, are, are pretty close. I think the scents are slightly different and um, one's more of a pre-wash and one of them is more of just your, your everyday type of wash. So um, we're working our way through that. Um, G Technic C2 V3 as a drying aid, as a topper, mm, it's quite hard to work with. Um, you've got a hazes over quite a lot, you need to buff it a little bit more, but it's got a little bit more longevity than the bead maker. I still think bead maker is the one that we'll end up keeping. We talked about the, the glass cleaning stuff, and I talked about the tri clean, and the Matte Dash G Technic is, is an interior product that um, I don't think we'll end up using. All right, so that's a little bit of an in-depth um, run through the, the detailing products that I have here on my shelf, and definitely a few of these are, are Glens, and um, some of these products are here to stay, some of these here are going to update, and definitely this setup will change over time, but um, thought you I uh, thought I'd just give you a little bit of an inside look into, into the products that we're using. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for the next one.